working on for the four days leading up to the landing? Experiments mainly. We had five mice on board that had to be observed living in a wakeless environment. You had to see if they would adapt to their surroundings? Yes. They did quite well, actually. Except for the two that disappeared. Disappeared? What do you mean? As in they escaped? No. They were kept in a sealed cage. And it was still sealed up when we noticed they were gone. They just vanished. And you don't think they turned on one another? I've heard that keeping mice cooped up like that can cause them to become cannibalistic. On returning to Earth, the three mice were dissected and determined that no, they didn't eat each other. Hmm. Strange. Did you notice anything else unusual about the flight there? Yes. During our sleeping periods, we would experience these these lights flashing across our eyes. We had to sleep in individual vertical vessels, and there was no source of light inside them. They were completely dark, pitch black. The, the lights would appear twice every minute. And do you think a lack of sleep affected you? It made you forget things? No. What happened when you landed? Four hours after landing, Ron and I started the first EVA. That's a moon. Extravicular activity, yes, I know the terms. We did three EVAs over the course of the mission. Ron and I would go out whilst Jean stayed on board. I collected lunar samples and uh, Ron deployed the hardware. This is one of the samples I collected. I kept this one for myself. For proof, I suppose. Proof? Can I... Eddie? Eddie, what happened up there? What makes you any different to any other reporter I've spoken to in the last 15 years? I'm not here to accuse you. I've been researching the Apollo 17 mission for a long time, and I've read every article that the news has written about you. You're just looking for some new angle. I want to know what you really experienced. What you saw. What you felt. It was our final EVA. We'd been out there for seven hours when the storm hit. And at the time, there wasn't much data on lunar storms from the previous missions. I remember going to look for Ron whilst he was doing maintenance on a UV spectrometer. It was difficult to see through all the dust being thrown up. What looked like twilight rays where the sunlight was filtering through. Oh, it was beautiful. And terrifying. The dust, dust began to clog up my suit and the surface of my visor, so I was just forced to turn back for the lander. Did you realise Jean had disappeared as well? When I got back, the 
the place was empty. Our tiny container was dark. It seemed the systems had overheated and the life support units kicked in. Jean was nowhere to be found. I couldn't get in touch with ground control. And that's when it hit me. I was the only one left. Forty six hours. That's how long I was up there alone. That's all it took. That distance, that detachment. The furthest away humanity has ever been from itself. I felt like I was swimming in a sea of clarity and confusion. But I managed to escape a frame of mind I've been trapped in my entire life. And gave it a name. Solipsism. What does it mean? Solipsism. I think therefore I am, therefore everything is, everything is a product of my own mind and I am the universe experiencing itself, born from the remains of a star, to be recycled over and over. Ultimately. The only living being in this universe that really exists is me.